The fifth and final season of Warzone has just dropped, and so it's once again time to jump into the best settings for the game to maximize your FPS, improve visibility across the board, and ensure you're getting the best gameplay experience. If you're someone who doesn't like to dwell on the details, then in today's video, I'm actually gonna start by going through all the settings pretty quickly, just quickly running through them, telling you the best setting where applicable. If there's a couple of options for a setting, I will tell you that as well. However, I do highly recommend that you stick around till later in the video where I'll be going through the settings in more more detail telling you some of the secret sauce that I know about some of these settings that really push the game to its max. And if there's a setting in the first part of the video where I run through everything that you want a bit more detail on, there'll be chapters or timestamps down below that will allow you to find the setting later on in the video where I jump into a bit more detail. So let's begin. We are in Warzone Season 5. Let's jump into the options. We're going to be focusing primarily in this video, as usual, on graphics settings. So let's do a quick run through of how I have the game set up currently. Display area, we want to go to display mode. This should either be set to full screen or full screen borderless. In theory, full screen should work better, but some people, including myself, find that borderless works just as well, if not better. I'm a content creator, so I like to be able to alt tab really quickly in and out of the game. So simple answer here is either full screen or full screen borderless, bit of a personal preference as to what works better for you. Display monitor, this is just gonna be your monitor. For me, it's my Elgato capture card, nothing to dwell on here. Display adapter, make sure this is set to your GPU. If you've got multiple GPUs, multiple things will show up here, but for most people, you'll just have your GPU, so just set it correctly. Screen refresh rate and display resolution are locked for me because I'm not running in full screen right now, but if you are running in full screen, you can set these. Make sure screen refresh rate is set to your monitor's refresh rate. For me, that's 240 hertz. And display resolution, just keep this at your native resolution. For me, 1080p. For you, could be whatever. Dynamic resolution, disable this, not something we want to use. Dynamic resolution frame rate target, basically associated with the thing I just said, don't turn on, so it doesn't matter what you set this to. Aspect ratio, just leave this at automatic. Sync every frame or V-sync, keep this off. Uh, custom frame rate limit, set this to custom, click the advanced below. Gameplay custom frame rate limit, I'd highly recommend you just max this out to make sure you're getting the best or highest FPS you can possibly get. Uh, menu custom frame rate limit, I like to keep this uh, a decently, well, decently high because I don't like my menu to just be really, really uh, jittery or 60 FPS, no one likes that. Uh, so I limit it to 100 because we don't need it to be using up loads of system resource while we're sat in the menu. Uh, and out of focus custom frame rate limit, I put this around 30 so that when you alt tab out the game, uh, the, the game will use less resource so you can, you know, go on the internet, do whatever you need to do without the game taking up loads of resource in the background. Next up, brightness. This is default to 55, sorry, to 50, but you want to set it to 55. Uh, adding that little extra five just makes the game a little bit brighter. Display gamma, 2.2 uh, if you are on a monitor, if you're playing on a TV for whatever reason from your uh, from your PC, you set it to 2.4, but for most people on PC, 2.2. NVIDIA highlights, disable those. NVIDIA reflex low latency, it's going to be a personal preference thing between enabled and enabled plus boost. I'll cover this a bit more a bit later, but I would recommend for most people just set this to enabled plus boost. That's likely going to be the best thing for you. Moving over to quality. Field of view, set this to ideally 120. Uh, by setting this to 120, you are getting the maximum vision possible. However, there are some situations where you might want to turn this down. More info on that later. Uh, click advanced, come onto the ADS field of view. You want to set this to affected camera movement. You want to set this to least so that we reduce the amount of camera shake uh, in the game. Render resolution, basically go through all the settings I'm doing at the moment. And if you're still not getting the FPS you need and you just need to get some FPS however possible, then turn Turning down render resolution will help you out. This is basically a percentage, so you could turn it down to like 75% of so the game's running at 75% of the resolution that you set earlier. But for most people, they don't really need to do that or shouldn't really be doing it. It makes the game blurry, so leave it at 100. Streaming quality, low. Texture resolution, normal. Texture filter anisotropic, high. You might think, why are we setting this at high? Well, it has no effect on FPS, really, So and, and it helps with visibility, makes the game look a lot better. Particle quality, high. You actually gain FPS having particle quality on high very weird most people still don't understand why but it is the truth you will gain fps having particle quality on high bullet impacts and sprays disabled tessellation disabled dismemberment and gore effects disabled and on-demand text streaming disabled all four of these settings don't aid in visibility and 
potentially could have impacts on FPS. Apart from bullets and impacts and sprays, I guess that's personal preference, but I like it disabled. Uh, if you ever have any problems just with the game stuttering for whatever reason, it might be that you need to do a shader reinstallation. If you want to do that, you can do that from here. You click this button and then it comes up with that bar at the top that basically says reinstalling shaders for multiplayer and stuff. It can fix a lot of problems uh, when you think you might have to reinstall the game. Post-processing effects. I'm going to cover this very quickly now, but I'll come back to it a little later. Um, filmic strength and anti-aliasing, they kind of go hand in hand. Basically, I would recommend that most of you go on a personal preference basis between OFF and SMAA1X. These both give you the best FPS, basically. OFF will give you the highest. SMAA1X gives you slightly lower FPS, but it makes the game look a bit smoother. Um, it makes the game look a lot less jagged. I find having anti-aliasing OFF makes the game look way too jaggy the aliasing is actually really bad. Um, but for either of these settings, whichever one you end up preferring, you need to turn filmic strength to one, because as you can see here, if the anti-aliasing option is not set to either of the T2X options, you have to set filmic strength to one. Otherwise, you get some weird blurring effect. So put filmic strength to one, anti-aliasing off or SMAA1X. Film grain, definitely none of that. We do not want any of that. That's going to make the game look horrible. DLSS, not going to cover it now, but for most people, just leave it at disabled. I'll come back to that later. Depth of field, motion blur, and weapon motion blur, disable all of those. Definitely don't want any of those on. I mean, who would want depth of field where you can't see things far away? So now on to shadow and lighting. Shadow map resolution, honestly, just set this to low. Low shadows look pretty much just as good as a lot of the higher shadows, and when you start getting up to really high shadows, you start taking away a lot of FPS for little to no reason. So just shove them on low. Cache, spot, and sun shadows, definitely turn these on uh, unless you're running really low RAM. I'm talking like four gig of RAM or less. Maybe then you should turn this off. But even then, I would still try with these on because they just gain you FPS by allowing shadows to be stored uh, in the RAM. It's a really, really helpful saying, and people who have this disabled are making a big mistake. Particle lighting, low. You don't need it any higher than low. It's kind of similar to shadows. You just don't need them higher. DirectX ray tracing, never have this on, even if you've got it as an option. A lot of you guys won't if you don't have RTX cards, but you do not want this on in Warzone. It is pointless. It takes FPS away like that. Uh, ambient occlusion and screen space reflection, both of these definitely disabled. A couple of other important settings before we jump into some of the more detailed stuff in terms of graphics. Movement in keyboard and mouse, make sure your slide behavior is on tap. If you don't do that, then slide cancelling and generally moving feels terrible. Um, auto tack sprint, you can activate this here if you are someone who likes to use that. I don't personally use it at the moment, but I have tried it before and it is helpful to some people. So it's definitely something to try out. And then also parachute auto deploy, definitely have this disabled. If you don't have this disabled, then you won't be able to actually get to the ground before most enemies. Um, uh, because it will auto deploy the parachute uh, a decent amount of time above the ground. Whereas having it disabled, you can get really near the ground, then pull your chute way better. You beat everyone down, helps out a lot. Then in the interface area, if you come down to accessibility, set your colorblind type to deuteranopia and set colorblind target to both. Doesn't matter whether you're colorblind or not, this improves the colors in the game just from the in-game settings. And it's it makes the game just overall look a lot nicer, I'm telling you. Next up, the only other thing in here which I think is very important is to make sure your minimap is set to square. Uh, if you set it to circle, you can see it over here, you actually lose a lot of the areas uh, on the map that you can see by having it on square. You, you, you see this bottom right bit is cut off on the, uh, on the circle over here, but on the square, you can see it. So you can see that if you were activating a UAV or running around in Caldera, this would be very, very handy. And then we have audio settings probably just as important as graphic settings. And I've done a whole video covering this, which you can find linked in the description below. Um, but I talk about midnight mode in that video and explain why this is the mode you should be using as well as explaining the rest of the audio settings here. I'm not gonna dive into that. If you wanna go see that, go check out that video after this video is finished. Uh, it gives a really in-depth description of why it's the best audio mix that no one seems to be using. Okay, so let's go back to some more details on the graphics now. I want to start off with display mode because I ran past this really quickly and I did say that you can set this to either full screen or full screen borderless. You don't want to set it to windowed or full screen extended window. Neither of those are helpful. Um, full screen really should be the better option here because what full screen does is it makes it so that the game basically gets full priority when it's running because it's running in a full screen window and anything being rendered in the background is basically like muted essentially. Uh, it means that no resources are being given to things running in the background whereas running full screen screen borderless is essentially like running windowed. 
uh, except it has no borders like a window usually has where it has that bar on the top and like, the X icon in the top right corner so you can close it. It basically just looks like full screen, but it shouldn't be as responsive as actual full screen. However, in Warzone, for whatever reason, both of these options work pretty well together. Um, this could partially just be because um, newer games these days seem to have much better optimized full screen borderless modes. Um, if you're someone who likes to alt tab a lot in and out of the game, uh, like I do because I'm a content creator, I've got OBS running at the moment recording this and I need to alt tab sometimes to check things and stuff, then full screen borderless is basically a must. Uh, so it's very handy that it runs th the same if not better than full screen. But I know a lot of people who um, are just playing the game to be as sweaty as possible, they prefer full screen. So all I can say is try both of these out and see which one works out better. So in video reflex low latency, as I said, if you just set this to enable plus boost, you're gonna get better results than having it disabled. You definitely shouldn't have this disabled. It's a, it's a helpful little thing to have to reduce latency in general if you're running an Nvidia card. Um, but some people might actually get a better result out of using enabled. And let me explain uh, the cases where you might get better out of which of these. Uh, if you go enabled, it says low latency mode is enabled and optimizing system latency. Enable plus boost is low latency mode is now enabled and optimizing system latency. Additionally, GPU clock frequencies are kept high in CPU bound cases. This can reduce latency, but will increase GPU power draw. Basically what this is saying is if you are in a CPU bound case, which means your CPU isn't as strong as your GPU overall, you know, you've got your CPU and your GPU being the two kind of motors in your computer. If you've got a way stronger GPU than you do a CPU, then you're in a CPU bound case because the CPU is kind of holding you back. Now, most people are in that situation as gamers. We have, you know, decent CPUs, but we've got these really powerful GPUs. And so enabled plus boost is the best option in that scenario. However, if you've got a situation where potentially um, either your CPU is actually stronger than your GPU, maybe your GPU is not that strong and your CPU is like, you know, an i7 or uh, one of the new Ryzen CPUs that are just... A, real powerhouses, um, or you're in a situation where they're actually very, very similar, you can experience better performance in terms of using reflex low latency by just setting it to enabled. So simple answer here is if you don't know which one to pick and you can't figure out whether you're in a CPU bound case or not, just try both of them out. Try one out for one game, try one out for another game, keep going back and forth and just see which one feels better. That's generally going to be the answer to a lot of the settings in here. So going back to FOV and ADS FOV, I always bang on in games about, you know, we, we always we want high FOV because having high FOV allows us to see more and get more info in the game. However, FOV, having it higher, does cause lower frame rates because you're showing more on the screen. If you look on the right here, when you've got 80 FOV, you're only showing in this box, essentially. Obviously, it's blown up to fill the whole screen. Whereas when you're on 120, you've got almost like double the amount of stuff on screen according to this diagram. I don't know if it's that um, that serious, but it might be. And that leads to just lower FOV, sorry, that leads to lower FPS. So if you're having struggles, you can come in here and turn this down a little bit. Some people even just like running at maybe 110 or 100, but I wouldn't go lower than 100 because you're just basically playing on a console at that point, you know? I think most people should just get used to trying, trying to run this game at 120 because you, the, the FPS that you lose, it's worth it for the extra info you gain and the extra kind of speed you feel like you're playing the game at when you have that high FOV. Then ADS Field of View, kind of mentioned this earlier, having it set to affected rather than independent, what this does is it makes it so that when you zoom in with a uh, any, any scope that's low magnification, so less than 3.25, it makes it so that the game doesn't actually zoom in as much as it usually would. Instead, it basically applies the higher FOV setting that you've set up here. It applies that partially to your zoomed in version of the game when you're actually ADSing, and it makes it so that your gun has less visual recoil on it. So it doesn't actually reduce the recoil, it just makes it look like your gun's bouncing way less, making it far easier to track targets. And you'll see any high level or even professional player will have ADS field of view set to affected. A little note on texture resolution. I've got this set to normal and I think most people should be able to set it to normal. Texture resolution has never been a massive uh, FPS uh, effector, really. Uh, instead, all you need to look at is come down here and look at your VRAM usage. Uh, this is gonna show you your maximum amount of VRAM you can be using. For me, um, I've got 8,000 or 8, gigabytes of uh, VRAM in my GPU. My max is actually a little bit below that. It's probably about 
uh, 8 or 80% of that actual max. As long as your bar isn't kind of, you know, going near there, and you'll see as I change texture resolution, it uh, has a massive effect on VRAM usage. As long as you're not going anywhere near there, you can actually have this as high as you want. I just find that normal and high don't look any different, so that's why I run it at normal. And running the game at like very low textures looks horrific. It really does. Um, but if you need to, to gain some FPS, maybe because you're actually pushing near that max VRAM, then you will have to come in here and lower this a little bit. But most people with any kind of modern GPUs should be able to set this to normal. So post-processing effects, I mentioned earlier to just set this to off or SMA A1X and then set your filmic strength to one. And that is definitely what you should do if you're just focusing on in-game settings and nothing else. However, if you have an Nvidia card, there are two secret methods or secret settings, which I covered in a video recently. You can see it uh, in the link down in the description below. Um, and it covers some stuff you can do in the NVIDIA control panel, actually activating a sharpen filter that has been hidden in the control panel for quite quite some time now. Uh, and by activating that sharpening filter and making the game sharper than it usually is, you can actually bump your anti-aliasing to Filmic SMAA T2X, which makes the game smooth as butter in terms of how it looks. It does lower your FPS a little bit, but it makes the game look really smooth. The problem is, is that usually it actually makes the game too smooth, almost blurry. But then we're sharpening on top of that, and then lowering the filmic strength to zero, it makes my game look sharper than I've seen anyone else who's running the game use. Um, I would say go watch that video and see if you can potentially use those settings because I've already had a load of people saying um, that that video has completely changed Warzone for them. NVIDIA DLSS, I'd just recommend you leave this disabled in most cases, especially if you're running at 1080p. You just don't need this on. It doesn't actually help the game much at all. It just makes a lot of weird um, artifacting appear on, especially items on the floor and stuff. It doesn't really work out. But if you are someone who can activate NVIDIA DLSS and you're running at 2K, so 1440p or above, then you can follow the guidelines over here and you can actually get decent results, i.e. put it to quality if you are running at 2K, so 1440p, put it to performance if you're running at 4K, and put it to ultra performance if you're running at 8K. In those circumstances, it actually works out pretty well. But for most people who are running 1080p or even 1440p and just want kind of a more basic, well-rounded experience in terms of the look, you can just leave this to disabled and it it's not gonna really affect much. So there we go, guys, a full in-depth run through of the Warzone settings for season five. The next time I'll be doing um, settings videos will likely be for Modern Warfare 2 and eventually Warzone 2 when that releases. I cannot wait for that. But until then, we've got Warzone season five to keep us busy and entertained. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, then it'd be awesome if you could leave a like down below and subscribe for more videos coming very soon. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye.